Okay, and uh, welcome to we're... the developer commentary of Ratchet and Clank Going Commando. I think this is uh, episode five or something now. I don't know what we're just blasting through these now. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, so this is a return to the arenas. Uh, we have Clank. We have an arsenal of weaponry, and now we're going to come back and and whoop some ass, some horrible things. And with the goal of finally having enough money to buy the mini turret. That's glove. right, the best gun in the entire game that breaks everything. So, given that we're going in there anyway, I could buy the Seeker gun and have enough ammo to participate. You could. Thank I don't you. think it's the best idea, but... Well, you know. some of those things are endurance tests, like we need a lot of ammo for. All right. So, yeah, there were a lot of sort of big jackpot things in this game. I mean, you could do the hover bike races over and over for money. Right. You could do the arenas over and over for money. There were two sets of arenas, two sets of hover bike challenges. Yeah. I mean, we really gave you a lot of opportunity to just grind out bolts if you really wanted to do it. Well, this was the uh, first game where we were really trying to to play up that go back battle. and try, you know, try stuff you've already done again uh, aspect of the gameplay because since all the levels level or since all the weapons leveled up and since you leveled up, we needed to give you a place where you could go grind for experience and for gold, but which wouldn't feel as much like a grind. Right. Chain blade raising the roof. Raising the roof. Because I think you beat him already once, right? No. We, we quit because uh, we wanted to go get clean. Got it. Oh. Oh. I really love our arena. Wow, you just brutalized him. That's the fucking uh, Seeker gun, man. <laughs> the Seeker gun sucks because I'm Tony Garcia and I don't know what I'm talking about. You suck. All right, let's keep going. Uh, all right, let's do this one. Go for it. Oh, I didn't get refilled on my ammo. <laughs> oh, that's right, because you have to buy ammo refills. Yeah. Uh, by the time we got to the third game and we were doing arenas again, we just realized that buying uh, buying ammunition was not fun. Well, also, like, what just happened right now is you would be so into it. Like, people have a lot of fun in the arenas. Right, yeah. They're a great little design, and people just want to keep going. Very they popular go, part go, of the go. game. You know, they don't want to slow down. They just want to go to the next challenge, go to the next challenge, go to the next challenge. And people would forget to buy ammo. And then they'd just be like, well, I lost all because I wanted to play. And it felt kind of cheap. All right. The B2 Brawler. B2 Brawler. 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 All right, let's do this. Are you just so into this now, Tony? I love the B2 Brawler. I really love the B2 Brawler. He was a good boss. Man, so many, really boss. so many bosses in this game. Yeah, we really crank them out. I don't think we had this many boss fights in Up Your Arsenal. No, I mean that was another thing. Just like the, uh, just like with the hoverbike races and the, uh, you know, all the rest of that, we scaled those back in in the later games just because they were so much work. Well, and I mean, you think about it. Like, how many programmers did we did we lose to these features? I mean, Max was entirely on a the entire game. Yep, Scott uh, was entirely on, on hover the bikes. hoverbike races. Uh, you know, we had Ricardo. Uh, Sorry, Roberto and Eric doing uh, space combat for a lot of times, but they also had a lot of time spent on space combat, and it was very hard for them to do things outside of those kind of levels. Yep. And uh, and this is all for stuff that's not the core gameplay per se of Ratchet and Clank. It's just you know, like if you're talking about the core experience of running around using your weapons and feeling like a badass, this this uh, you know the arenas add to that, but but a single boss fight you know or a right. uh, or a, a you know a, a hover bike race didn't really add as much. And the other thing was uh, I don't know a, a lot of people don't know this, but we made this we made these games really quick. I mean, uh, we, yeah, about ten months. We put them we we put them out every year, which meant that from you know after after post production on each of the games, uh, we you know we only had about ten months, yeah, or or less to make these. So we had to uh, we kept wanting to put more and more and more and more into every game. 
and kept realizing that we were rubbing up against not being able to put more where it really mattered. Yeah. But the arenas are a place that it really matters because this is a this is a really smart uh, variety mechanic because it, it feels like a different mode, but it uses right. all of the same core mechanic stuff. Exactly. I mean, every we keep we keep them in the same art. We don't have to make a new level every time. And every everything that the player learns from playing regular single player levels is valid. Uh, all of the skills that they can they can show that they've mastered it. You know, it's just very efficient and also well it kind of goes back to what we were talking about uh, at least we touched upon in the in the clank section is that you don't have to tutorialize any of this yeah you really can drop the player in and nobody will have any problems with what they're supposed to do oh you got some boss fights coming yeah in the middle of your challenge well I, you know i like to think this inspired every boss rush mode ever made you know what you know if this takes off Maybe we can make, uh, I'd like to think this t-shirt inspired another t-shirt. <laughs> and, you know, because it's the catchphrase. And then only the people who buy the t-shirts will get it. Oh, here we go. There you go. That's the gun. The game is now broken. Worth the wait. Everything will be super easy here. Um, but we were making some sort of a point, right? Possibly. I'm you know not what? sure. When we play it back, I'll remember and then I'll go cut it in. <laughs> and it'll make me seem really smart. Well, and the uh, one other cool thing that I'm, I'm noticing that we did very well in this uh, these arenas was sort of the, the pageantry and theatrics associated with it. Yeah. Like that arena announcer and the, you know, like uh, the, the transitions between rounds where the, the little things pop out and guys run, like... It just uh, it makes it feel like every round is kind of special. One of the big dangers when you have a mechanic like the arena is is that people feel like they're not making any progress. They're seeing the same art, they're seeing the same enemies. You know, every wave brings something different gameplay-wise, but also the presentation of every wave is slightly different, so that you yeah. you know you get you you, you just get a, a variety feeling. Out of it. it manages to find a way to not feel repetitive, which is so easy to fall into a repetitive mode with this type of gameplay. Yeah. Because the art doesn't change, the enemies are pretty much, by the third time you've done this, you've seen all the enemy types. You know, oh, it's, um... I'm not gonna do the endurance challenge. Okay, that's fine. Uh, if I remember, that's like the 50 to 100 round one. Yeah, so. that's the that's supposed to just be for skill points and stuff like that. It's I think we're fine if we skip it. All right, so we're going to go back out. Uh, where would you like to go next, Mr. Garcia? Uh, I think we can only go to one place now. Um, well, let's, let's look at the menu and we'll find out. Oh, I didn't. No, you didn't see that. That didn't happen. <laughs> But yeah, I, it's um, that, those were good arenas, you know, not too much different between rounds, but enough to feel different each round. Yeah, which I think is really good. It struck a good balance there. Yeah, I mean, you're and that was you know not very long, in and out, but it's a great way to kill time, get bolts. It's a way to grind bolts without you know really grinding, which I think was a very good. Yeah, that was about 18 minutes, and I had fun that whole time. So, uh, so what do we have left? Let's see. We've yeah. got Endaco, uh, we've which we've been beaten. There. That was where we got Clank. Oh, another space combat. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think that's where we're going next. All right. And I have yet to play any space combats in this game because you played the last one. All right. So, Tony, I'm going to put you on with Mary no. while I play this because I think, I think this space combat is going to require my full attention. Wouldn't you agree, Tony? Well, I mean, you know what I just realized right now is that this is yet another bolt grinding section in the game. Uh, I completely what, forgot that we use space combat as bolt grinds. That's true. It's different in a, challenges. In addition to the other two kinds of bolt grinds. Well, I mean, oh, we have, plus we have the desert in this game the, with yeah, the, crystals the crystals. And, I was about to mention the crystals. We have a lot of these bolt grinds in this game. Yeah, it's crazy. Here, uh, let me give you to Mary and we'll start playing. Hi. Hello. So now we get to mock Mike. Yeah, we get to uh, watch Mike fail horribly at space combat. Woo I mean, this was another just ordeal. Because, I mean, um, we had such ambition for space combat. Oh, yeah. As to what it was going to be. 
At what point in the production cycle were we doing, uh, were people programming the space combat? Was it later um, or was it in the middle? Or It was pretty remember. much right in the middle. Uh, middle? I think, so the, um, the way space combat ended up working out, which, I don't know, maybe was not the best way to do it, maybe it was, I'm not sure, is that the people who were in charge of doing the weapons, uh -huh. uh, after the weapons had been mostly prototyped, uh, had been moved on to space combat. Oh, yeah. Uh, because the weapon stuff had to be done fairly early on in production. I mean, we oh, can't yeah. make the game without the weapons being done first. Uh -huh. So once they were done and the, and the weapons had sort of moved on to bug work, uh, right. they moved on to the space combat sections. So those were kind of done in the middle of the, uh, of the production cycle. It's uh, it it really makes you respect more how uh, like Star Fox. Oh, definitely. The, the number of problems that they ran into and had to fix in that kind of game, and I mean, it's hard to not make a space make a space flying game and not be compared to Star Fox. Oh, of course, because I as soon as I knew this was going in the game, I kept thinking, oh, I want it to be just like Star Fox sixty four, and it's like, well, yeah. this is supposed to be a mini game. We exactly. can't put that much time into it. And that's and that sort of thing is it's hard to make these mini games not get compared to i mean the hover bike races will naturally be compared to to full-blown racing games right and not unfairly necessarily right. but it's it we can't put the time and effort that would go into saying to say make a burnout or mario right. kart or you know another full featured racing game it's same with space combat was, we don't have the time to make no. star fox it's no, not gonna exactly happen. no but you know you try really hard with what you have and i think they did a pretty good job i mean mm -hmm. I don't. I'm, I don't want to sound like I'm knocking the space combat. I think oh, it's no, a very it good. good game that we have, that we made here. But um, yeah, with the constraints trying, that we had, yeah, just so much. I was trying to remember why I didn't play this part and say because I know I tested either three to four months on Ratchet Two, and oh. I was like, oh my! Are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> Holy shit on a biscuit! Uh. I feel like we've been doing a very bad job pointing out the artists, and uh, oh yeah, that's just me not knowing. Quite honestly, I don't really, I didn't really work with artists too much. I mm -hmm. normally work with designers. Mm -hmm. Mike's got no excuse because Mike did work with artists. <laughs> but for me, uh, I didn't work with them too much, and I only very briefly remember. So I don't mean to not credit the artists. I just oh, yeah. honestly don't know. But I'm pretty sure the space combat sections. Uh, much like the racing sections, were all done by an artist named Craig Goodman. I, I think, think you're right. I, I think know he did, did all the space combat. Yeah, I know he did the uh, the racing. So I remember talking to him about it after I'd gone through the racing and how amazing it looked. Right. And so because I'd go talk to him about it, but I and I think you're right. I think he also did. Uh, this was Goodman, yeah. Yeah, Mike good. says also said uh, Craig Goodman did do space combat. Yeah, and the, uh, you know such a difficult challenge to try because we, we have to confine you to a space you're really oh, yeah. confined to a very small space but it has to feel like you're not confined mm -hmm. and uh just so so difficult so difficult to sort of give you that sense of freedom but at the same time limiting you to limiting you to a very small play area when yeah all there's, things a, are set there's and a small area for the camera and the artist had to work within constraints for you know the user has this much space to go through, and you have this much space for any sort of uh, uh, decorations coming in through a, a cave, and so it has to be bigger than you think it needs to be, just right. so that the camera can get through it. Exactly. I mean, and the uh, you have to the player has to be able to see everything and not get confused and not right. get distracted. Mm -hmm. There's just so much going on. And they want it to look good, and it, yeah, it's very it's not easy. It's really not. And so big props to everybody who did this sort of this stuff because it turned out really well. Because yes. it's pretty. Oh, there you go, Mike. Would you like Tony back? Yes, yes. Okay, here's here's Tony back. That was well. That was well played. I I did except my for best. the bout of cursing in the middle. That's not family friendly at all. I didn't realize we were trying to be family friendly. I'll do my best to okay. uh, to try to be family. Maybe just friendly. tone down the mfers a little bit. If you want, when I go back and edit this, I can go. Out all of it, and we can. I have think a family it'll be funny friendly. just to insert random <laughs> all over the place. I think. <laughs> uh, you know, I've never done the <laughs> before. Actually, I will have to learn how to <laughs> just so that I could do this. This is a good interaction between you know the thief and the brute have a, the the thug leader have a very good chemistry. Yeah, yeah, they worked out really well. Kudos to uh, writers and animators on that. Uh, uh, you're 
you. Uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> 